I'm Jane Hodgkinson and I live in Wheaton, Illinois and I am the former executive director of the Western DuPage Special Recreation Association. WDSRA is an extension of nine park districts, serves the western half of DuPage County outside west of Chicago and we provide services for children and adults with special needs including things such as wheelchair sports, Special Olympics and a whole host of other sports activities. Today I was talking with the committee that is working with the IHSA on developing uh, guidelines for uh, programs that might serve students with special needs and we were discussing some various uh, issues uh, including how many students in a high school population are likely to be uh, involved with a special need or have a special need. Uh, we also discussed uh, whether or not um, there are uh, barriers to those students participating in high school sports. Uh, some of the barriers that I mentioned is that there is a myth about uh, whether or not these students pose more of a liability uh, and in my experience with uh, almost 40 years of Special Olympics and with uh, 35 years in special recreation associations, uh, we have not seen that there is an increased liability from these kids. They do not suffer any more injuries or uh, have any more problems than normal athletes and probably less injuries and, and less problems than regular high school athletes. Uh, also, we discussed um, the possibility that one of the barriers that high schools might face, truthfully, is the accessibility of their facilities. So whether or not their facilities, their gymnasiums, their swimming pools, their tennis courts are in uh, accessible locations that don't have steps or doorways that are too narrow or uh, other barriers of no way to get into the swimming pool other than uh, going down a walkway, um, whether those accessibility factors might be one of the barriers that they would face. Then we also talked about what were some of the uh, likely resource partners that uh, the IHSA could develop and we mentioned the University of Illinois and their program for adaptive sports and we also discussed the Special Recreation Associations of Illinois as being one of the resource partners for IHSA. I think my vision for how the IHSA is going to be able to improve situations for athletes who have a disability uh, is uh, to offer two different groups of services. One group of services might be for those athletes who uh, choose and prefer being in what's called a parallel sport. So it's a sport that is offered in addition to what the high school is offering such as wheelchair basketball. They'll be with like members uh, on a team who also have other physical disabilities or Special Olympics is a parallel sport uh, where all the participants in the um, Special Olympics uh, sport will have a special need uh, which, which could be cognitive uh, uh, challenges or autism or one of, the, uh, one of the situations that is uh, provided for by Special Olympics. Th so the services that could be provided for those students who are pursuing the parallel course might be um, providing them with a place to practice, uh, making sure that um, school social workers or physical therapists can make referrals to the program, uh, providing a budget so that uh, there could be a coach for the uh, for the activity, whether it's a Special Olympics coach or a wheelchair basketball coach. Um, or, in the case of wheelchair basketball, because it's not likely that wheelchair athletes could all come from one school just because of the lack of kids in one given school population, what's more likely to happen is that high schools that are within a certain conference or a certain region could band together to try to create a wheelchair basketball team. So by that I mean um, uh, the situation that we have at Western DuPage Special Recreation Association and our wheelchair basketball teams have been state champions. I think they just won their seventh victory. Um, in, in my area, in DuPage County, we serve about 10 or 11 high schools. We've never had more than two athletes come from one individual high school. 
but what we've been able to do is to blend all of the athletes that we have from various high schools so that we're able to field a team. So in a team type of activity such as wheelchair sports, we'd be able, um, I think IHSA could encourage high schools to band together in a region or a conference or something like that to provide that and, and pitch in the financial support to pay for the coach or, or whatever would be needed. Now the, now the second types of services I talked about would be for those students who want to be included in the high school team. Um, they want to participate with their non-disabled peers in high school sports. So that might be golf or swimming or some sport where a person might have a physical challenge, even a cognitive, even a, a, a autism, high level autism. So they might be able to participate in the sport, but they might need support. So they might need uh, some kind of accommodation made for them. And that accommodation could be uh, in a track and field meet, uh, running with another sighted runner for a person who's visually impaired. For a person who's playing golf, they might be able to um, uh, drive uh, uh, their wheelchair up on the greens to uh, tee off um, or up on the greens to putt uh, or take their electric chair up on to the driving range, for example. So different kinds of accommodations could be made. Um, some of those accommodations, and probably most, would not cost a great deal of money. I think, I think where the cost would probably come in would be when you're trying to hire additional staff to provide uh, aids for those kinds of things.